it becomes a thing where, you know, if you don't start, you don't start. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in, in doing, and you just refine on the way. You know, like, all right, so he, we have this. All right, I don't like that. We can tweak that and move that and become what you want. Right. But if you always try to just think about what you want and don't do anything, you don't have any application. Application beats theory every time. Right. So Have you always had that kind of mindset? All my life. Without knowing that. Without knowing that. Yeah. Without knowing that. So yeah. what's an example, like, when you were younger or before you had the awareness of the mindset that you could attest that to? Um... I think a good story is uh, when my guidance counselor told me in high school um, not to apply for NYU. Holy shit. And I was like, That's hey. not their job. <laughs> yeah, I was like, she was like, no, you should try, uh, you know, Stony Brook School or SUNY School. And I was like, I know it's $150. I have the, the money order. Um, go ahead. I Just, okay, I yeah. heard you. I'm going to go ahead anyway. Yeah. And I got in. Yeah. And um, started my first business, brick and mortar, at 24, a liquor store. Um, totally on the whim of... My friend said, yo, I think this would be a good idea for you. And I was like, yo, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I, they were like, well, I have a spot. I went and checked the spot out. I liked it. I was like, yo, I'm doing it. Um, no retail experience. Yeah. No understanding of spread, of, uh, 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 of, of you know, buying wholesale, selling retail. Yeah. I, I had no idea what those, uh, what those concepts were on a, um, on a business scale. I mean, but, you know. Uh, on other things, I understood the concepts, but I never had, like, I didn't know what the exact markups were supposed to be, yeah. and I just did it. I just did it, and I learned as I went. And that's kind of the best way to do it, in my opinion. Like, some people, you because you could analyze and, and, and put on Excel spreadsheets and sit there for And create analysis forever. paralysis. Exactly. Right, right, right. And sit there forever and get lost in that and actually never take that first step into doing something that you kind of want to or should be doing, essentially. You go into that, you, we walk into that path and we talk about limiting self-beliefs and, yeah. and, you know, like you are the sum of the people you spend time with and well, what if somebody tells you, oh, you shouldn't do that? No, that's impossible. Yeah. And then you don't do it. Well, it, become, it becomes a mindset, right? And then that mindset manifests into an actual ego and a personality and then you're carrying that with you. And then you identify in that space, and that's who you you're presenting to the world that way. Exactly, yeah. and you're presenting that to the world. What what have you learned in the realty network avenue that kind of aligns with that momentum shift and that flowing and that continuous kind of keep on going? So the way I got into um, into the whole real estate mortgage lending business, and um, I had the liquor store in '99. I opened it. Um, in 04, I was recruited by an owner of a bank, and the, what, the reason I was recruited was because somebody who worked there, it was like my little cousin, he was like, oh, you got to talk to my cousin Omar in the Bronx. He, he could do all this stuff. So the guy was, yeah, like, he was hyping. My cousin Omar in yeah. the Bronx. He was like, yo. And he's, he's got like, a towel. He's, he's like, just like does waving he do, does he do real estate? He's like, no, no, but he has his own business, and he's, he's popping. You got to yeah, yeah. go talk to him. So yeah, this yeah. guy drove from Long Island in his... Uh, older Jewish guy in his squish squish Nike sweatpants and a dress shirt which yeah. I've never seen before great look came to 159 3rd Avenue in the South Bronx yeah and had a conversation with me and wanted and he was like listen I want to speculate in the Bronx I want to buy some stuff I hear you're the guy to know um, so can you help me so I was like well what do I get paid and then he started introducing me to oh I'll pay you 6% finder's fee I'll pay you this I'll pay, you know like so I started understanding on, on hundreds of thousands of dollars Six percent was a lot of money, sure. so I was like, "Okay." So I found one, like a week later, I found one, and we did the deal. He bought the property, and um, then I was looking for another one. And then, so what I did was before text and video and all that, I emailed my crew, "Yo, man, I'm doing this now," because I was big on the email thing, yeah, Blackberries and stuff, sure. Um, and then people would just send me their friends. Yo, Omar does this. Does this. this that's it. That was it. That's Omar. It. Omar's brand was strong enough that Omar does this. Call him for that. And then I started doing loans for people and not really knowing what I'm doing. Went back to um, the guy who recruited me. And I was like, listen, um, um, I have this loan. I have that loan. He was like, listen, you can do all that. He was like, what do you make at the liquor store? At that time, I was like, oh, I make after everything about 120 He goes, you'll make seven times that right. in the real estate game. He was right. like, but you have to come here. You have to. Learn. I can't. You know this part time thing. You'll make money, but not what you could make. And um, I ended up hiring employees for the store, going to work at the mortgage bank. Um, and um, at the final, at the end of the year, I started the mortgage bank officially in October. And from October to December, October, November, December, yeah, three months, I made eighty thousand dollars. Wow. Right. And I was like, well, it took me a whole year to do this. 
at the other place. And I was like, yeah, the numbers make sense. For me. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm out. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had a nightclub and a liquor store. I just liquidated. I didn't even sell. I just liquidated. I just closed them up, sold everything, and pursued that because the numbers made sense, but also the life made sense. Where yes. the liquor store, I had to be there at 9 a.m. to midnight. And let me let's be totally transparent here. Like I wasn't that typical liquor store. Like I was across from a precinct, right? So I was young. I was 25. Um, a lot of the police officers were coming out of the academy, going sure. there. Um, I built another room for them. Sure. And I had the cigar lounge yeah. with the TV and, and where they could be in full uniform I, drinking. I could tell by the setup <laughs> yeah. right now that yeah. you don't, you you don't, go all the you don't way. spare expense. Right. Well, the thing is you go all the way, right? Like if you're going to do something, commit to that shit, right? Yeah. Go all the way. So this again, this is us talking about it 20 years later. Sure. That I can give you some, some sort of perspective. Yeah. Um, I was just doing it because I would be like, well, what would I want? What would I want to do? Sure. So – Liquor store is legally closed at 12. You know, now that statute of limitations has passed. Right. Um, I seldom came home before 2. Right. Because between 1 and 2, I made as much money in 2 hours that I made the whole day. Yeah. Because people knew that I was there. People knew I was across from the state police precinct. People, the police officers would tell them, hey, go to see Omar. Go yeah. to see Omar. So, um, yeah, and I carried that over when um, the opportunity came up for me to open up a nightclub in um, the Bronx. It was like a bar lounge. Again, man, the after hours mark was crazy. Like yeah. what we made from eight to, to to four was great. What you made from four to seven was crazy. Yeah. Was <laughs> crazy. Um, but that wasn't really conducive to having a kid and why uh, you know a wife with kids. It was just like I was running both ends, yeah. and then finally I was like, well, I could make more this way and have a, like a life and actually see my kids once in a while. Sure. And it was a conscious decision of of wanting to be present. I think a big thing in all that is is everybody wants a guy, right? Whether it be your barber, your tattoo artist, your re, your real estate guy, everyone wants or a gal. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants a person that they know they could send your way or send that person's way. And it's like you want your little tribe, right? You want like your little inner circle of people that you know one hand washes the other. Yeah. And one thing I learned from the book, uh, the War of Art, not the Art of War, the War of Art, is pros hire pros. Okay. Right, it's the idea that you have to outsource. You can't do everything. I hate websites. I don't know how to build a website. I don't want to build a website. Right, right, I have no desire right. you know to do you a website. Need one, I know I need you one. Don't want to deal with it. So, right, right. so a part of me, but then like your ego, right, tricks in. It's like, nah, I can, I can fucking build a website. Right. Same thing with my pool, my little rinky dinky blow up pool, right. I was like, I could fucking put up a little pool. I'm like raking it out. My hands are getting blisters because I haven't worked out hard in a long time from the rake. And I put up the pool, and then I look at it, I'm like, this thing is going to overflow. This took it's, me two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's lopsided. Right, it's going right, to just right, – right. the, the, the levees are going to break, and I'm going to flood my backyard. Yeah. But I had to drain the entire thing and do it all over again, then hire someone to do it inevitably. The right way. Where, right, right. Where if I would have just checked my ego and checked myself a little bit and said, this isn't my thing. Right. Like, this is not my wheelhouse. You want to talk about philosophy? Let's go. Right. But – Building a pool, putting up a pool, not my thing. How has ego or that that persona kind of diluted for you? Because you have to check yourself, especially when it comes to like a liquor store or being around certain people. Where have you found those opportunities to kind of like check yourself? And what's your perspective on that now in comparison to then? Uh, well, the truth of the matter is that you, you become a product of your environment, right? Like you're, you're around certain things all the time. They become normal. Um I'll go into the 80s and 90s where, the, like, the movies were crazy violent, right? Yeah. And then we're all kind of hardened to that. And sure. now I look at movies with my kids. I'm oh, my God, you can't watch that. And, um, you know, but <laughs> yeah. we were there. We were immersed in that. Like, if sure. the more bullets, the better. Scarface, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. That was our generation. Um, I think what, what what's helped me tremendously is uh, I kind of found what I'm good at, and I focus on that. And, you know, like, you can use it for business. Be like, what are you good? How do you make money? Right, so this is how I make money. So let me focus on that. And the peripheral, like um, I wanted to do marketing. The reason I wanted to do marketing was because I had so many years where I was doing transactions for people, and people knew my name but never knew my face. They're like, "Oh, you're Omar. You did that crazy deal." Da, da, da. I'm like, "Yeah, that was me." She, wow. Had I known you, this was you, I would have referred this to you. So I was like, well, "How do I get my face out there without?" taking my eye off the ball of what I'm good at. Right. So that's why I ended up doing marketing because I'm like, I want people to know what I am, but I, I'm, I'm not going to be out there. I don't have – like that's not what I'm good at. What right. I'm really good at right. is structuring a deal. I know how to look at a deal from 80 different angles and like, all right, 
let's bulletproof it, fix this, do this, do that, and switch it around so that the bank says yes. Um, and I'm really good, you know, relationships. I'm, I'm really easy to speak to, and, I'm, you know, I, I kind of, I think I have a high uh, emotional IQ where I can understand what the client really needs, and um, I'm, I'm, if you retain me, I'm with you. Right. So I think that's a big thing people resonate with. They're like, yo, Omar, like, you know, other people can tell them, oh, I want to do this for you, and they're like, no, no, I'm going to go with Omar. And I, I might not even know what the hell you're talking about, but because they know my the amount of loyalty and tenacity I bring to it, they, they resonate with it. They, they want to feel like somebody's really got their back at, at the end of the day. Does structuring a deal put you in, like, a flow state? Do you feel like you're kind of, like, operating on a different frequency than, like, just say? Struct- structuring a deal is almost like looking at the matrix for some people. Where it doesn't make yeah. sense for other people, sure. But because I, I, I kind of know what they, what, what the bank wants. What, what does that do? For, like, what, is it like mathematic aspect of it? Is it like a puzzle aspect of like what, what aspect of structuring a deal do you find to be so like? Because to me that sounds boring as fuck. Right. Like with all due respect. Well, like I've, I've worked in finance and I've done some of that world in the well, car business, and I understand the idea of structuring a deal. But to me, it's just like that doesn't. Well, the personal vendetta comes from this in two thousand and in two thousand. Um, I decided I wanted to buy a house, right? Because my wife was pregnant at the time, um, my now 16-year-old. So, no, I'm sorry, 2003. Um, so I go to the bank. I was the liquor store and, and, and the club, so I had, like, cash going through. I had money for a down payment, and I go to the bank, and I'm like, hey, um, I want to buy a house. Everybody was buying a house in 03. Everybody, <laughs> anybody who was above 18 could buy a house, right? right? You didn't right. have to be legally here. Right, right, right. And they, she lady whips out the book, sits me down. She lady, have a seat. Uh, sit down. I'm like, okay. She goes, well, what do you make? I was like, well, I make this on paper, and this is what I, you know, I show. You, you see my bank statements. Um, she flips pages, and she asked me another question. She looks at me, concerned. She flips pages. And after she flipped through a fucking book, she tells me, I can't help you. So my wife is pregnant. I had to make a move, so I called that, that cousin I told you yeah, about yeah. who got me recruited. I said, yo, I got to buy the house. Everybody and their mother can get a loan. Get me somebody. So he goes, yo, I got you. Um, he calls the guy from Bank of America whatever. He calls me up. We get the approval letter. I found the house. Boom, boom, boom. We're in the house. It's a process. Right. It's a, it's a process, but it's who you know of course. that helps you. So my pleasure is always sticking it to the bank because my, I, you know, if my client retains me, I'm 100% for them. So I'm like, this is how we have to figure it out. So that's, I think that's what really, really inspires me yeah. to help somebody like, yo, man, I got you. Because I was there. You know, and I'm still angry about it 20 years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because... Because that's not – it's not true. You know what I'm saying? It was, maybe it was true to you, but it's, right. not, it's not true. So I think that – that's what really was a turning point for me to really get focused on real estate because um, how many people get told no, right? And, and if your why is strong enough, you find a way. Yeah. And, and that's what I did, and that's what I do for my clients. Are you familiar with the Ikigai? No. no it's really. not something you order. Um, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Japanese purpose circle. Okay. And essentially it's four circles, and in the middle they all overlap. Okay. And what you do is you fill it out based off of um, what you like to do, what you're good at, what you get paid for, and what the world needs. Right. And where they all start to overlap, then it overlaps into like passion and blah, 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 blah. And then you're able to kind of find your ikigai by filling out this Japanese purpose circle. Okay. So I wonder what your, your ikigai would look like. I'm because to yeah, Google that and yeah, out. Google one. Figure it out. Yeah. Google it. I should just have printouts. Just yeah, like yeah fill this out. out right now. Fill this yeah. out right now. Let's, uh, and I'll flip through it. Um, I think I – think you need to have that moment, though, right? You need yeah. to have that moment where you're like, "The fuck, man!" Yeah, and fuck that you. Mo- that, <laughs> it, well, that moment, yeah. that moment kind of creates itself over and over again right. for different people, for different reasons, for different things, and that can be a detriment and completely throw you off, or that could be a motivator, and that could be what does lead you to the next thing and to being successful and having, you know, a wife who's pregnant. And you're like, "What the fuck?" Like, got to happen. I, I, gotta, I have to figure this yeah, out. Yeah, 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 There's exactly. no other option yeah, the motivation. right now. And, and, and I think that, you know, different people get motivated for different things, but I feel like my family and, and, and you know, like, people look at, 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 at the world as, like, this, this huge thing. And I, I tell my kids this all the time, yo, you have to take the first step. So I try to take that fear out of people. I'm like, yo, man, I'm like, all right, you do, oh, my credit. Oh, my, yo, find out what your score is and then build. Yeah. Like, don't, you know, like, oh, I'll never, all right, hold on. Let's take a look. So because once it becomes real, once you kind of know where you're standing, sure. you can move forward. Yes. But people don't want to find out most of the time. I think that's what leaves people stuck. 1,000%. Yeah. And I see that even in the coaching world mm-hmm. where people have the – for me, it boils down to four things. It's awareness, accountability, discipline, and ultimately freedom. Okay. And people step into the awareness. I think we all have these moments where, like, you have this awareness come to you, right? 
and it's either going to be like a gentle tap on the shoulder or it's going to be a two by four to the back of the head. Right. But if you want to call it God, source, higher self, the universe, whatever you want to call it, it's going to make itself known throughout you. In some way, shape, or form, you, it's going to find a home in you, whether it's cancer, an ulcer, an expression, an artistic, whatever, it's going to find a way to, to manifest in you. Right. And I think that people have that awareness moment, and it's to your point, Fear it w- is what makes them recoil back and be like, well, I can't fucking do this. Right, I can't right, do right, this. Right. And it's a fear of the unknown, which is where, you know, untapped potential and possibility is. Right. And that's the reality of it. There's n- there is a fear, but you have to face that fear and step into it. I think if your necessity or need outweighs your fear, you unlock a, a, a level in yourself. Yeah. Like, I'll give you a really, really funny example. Like, when I was a kid, definitely afraid of the dark. Def, like shit your pants afraid of the dark so you should not try sensory deprivation I don't, no no now I'm joking so, no, so the biggest thing was like when I heard my first son I was like yo man if there's anything in the dark that could hurt anybody then you know I gotta be ready cause I got I got somebody I gotta take care of Yeah. and my need outweighed my fear sure so now I can walk I could walk anywhere I don't care because I'd rather take it than anybody else behind me me and my family so of course I think when people, like, the whole thing with the house, like, I needed to, it had to happen. It, it wasn't the an why option. Was, yeah, the why wasn't important. I mean, sorry, the, the how wasn't, it was going to happen. Right. So, right. So, it, it just took me how to find, like, I had to unlock some stuff to make it happen. And that's a mindset, right? And right. that becomes, like, and, and maybe that's also, like, it ties into creating that matrix thought for you when you're creating the deal. The deal, exactly. It's, it's, the, it's the, okay, this has to happen. Right. And when it comes to mortgage lending or any really like – like that's a, a micro of the macro, right? That's, right. Just, an, that's just a manifestation a of vehicle. a bigger picture. It's a vehicle. Exactly. Right. Right. The, 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 the micro of it is this has to happen. And then the, the – what I find interesting is like the puzzle now, right? Like now it's like – and then once you step into that space like you are now and it starts flowing – now, to me, it, it becomes this untapped potential of possibility, and almost anything's possible. Right. You know, and especially when it comes to the, the mortgage aspect of things, you know, being, being the vehicle of the, of the macro, it's, it's a really funky world, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's not It's, it's not ever-changing. Fair. Yeah. It's ever-changing. It's so totally fluid. And if you're not educated, like, every day, every day, every day, you could lose. You could lose the game. So what do you do to keep yourself not only just, you know, educated and up to date on the mortgage aspect, but what do you do? Like, what is your your ritual? I, we know each other through CrossFit, which right. has been a, a, a life lesson for me in, in a multitude of ways looking back on it at the time. But what are some things you do in your own practice, like your own rituals, your own routines, your own – that creates your lifestyle? Well, I meditate and stretch in the morning to, to center me out. Then I destroy myself and, of course, the workout with my Beautiful, wife. Beautiful, yeah. And then I get to work, and I work until it's over. But I'm subscribed to every government, um, like, anything to do with lending, I have an email. And I, and I, and I process information very quickly. Um, maybe that's due to education. Maybe it's due to discipline. But I'm able to process and implement very quickly. And because I'm in motion with so many transactions, they automatically apply. It almost, like, fills in and, like, you know, yeah, the yeah. green light, bing, 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 oh, this, this is going to affect this. Work on this right now, and you know that's. But it's just about processing information. You have to be actively, intentfully processing information. You can't just sit there and be like, "Oh yeah, that's nice." It just won't work. <laughs> yeah, it just won't that's work. Great. It just won't work because finances are all sentiment, right? Right. Like um, when COVID hit, the bank shut down. March 29th, the bank shut down. They, uh, I had deals on the board ready to close. They were like, "We don't have anybody to buy these loans," you know. And then you have to pivot. You have to be like, "All right, so what is moving right now? Anything government back? All right, so let's focus our energy." on those transactions because that's the way we're going to make money and that's how we can help people because if they can't if you can't close a deal that's all they care about they want to you know like they need yeah. to know and they need to know that their professional is on is on point with that and that's a big part of it is is the idea that people they're trusting in you to guide them through this process which is overwhelming right it's daunting right it's like to your point it's there's a sense of fear of you know am i going to get bought am i how's this going to look where's the house blah, 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 blah. everybody's afraid of getting rejected yeah right like denied um and then uh, i had a thought real quick um what people tend to not when they don't understand something fully it just seems seems to become so far away mm. and what what they should do what i what i've learned through personal practice is you set milestone goals to your large goal and as your your milestones get hit 
your belief levels tramp, you know, they kick up, your frequency sure. f- kicks up, and now sure. everything's closer, and now everything's more possible. And now you like re like you reinvigorate yourself. Sure. And now, so if you went at speed one, you're at speed two, you're at speed three, like, and if you learn how to, you know, work with yourself, if you're self aware of yourself of how to trigger yourself and how to motivate yourself, the sky's the limit. Yeah, I want to go back to the meditating. How important do you find? Because I, I meditate every morning. Okay. Um, and if I miss it for whatever reason, I'm I'm finding a way to get it in. In anyway, day, okay. some way, shape, or form. I need, I need that, that stillness. What does your meditation practice look like, and, and like how important has that become? With COVID, because like it, this became a big, you know, what are you going to do with your time, right? Are you going to sit there and just sure. complain about shit, or are you going to figure out how to best use your time now? Sure. So it became super important. I, I do the Ramwad, yep. which is, to me, meditation and stretching. Sure. Um, and. You know, like, our, our, our brains are like computers, right? So they're always going, always going. You have to shut it down and give it clarity. And that means thinking about nothing, intentfully, just being in the moment. And that 30 minutes or 20 minutes or even 40 minutes, whatever the day gives me, um, it just, re- like I said, it reinvigorates. You yeah. know, if you use that tool right, you can reset yourself, and you can reset yourself out of negativity. You can re- reset yourself towards whatever goal you have, you can reset yourself against something that may have happened yesterday that really fucked you up. Yeah. And just be like, you know what? Put it in perspective, right? And and find a better way to deal with it. And I think that's essential. It's turning it over. It's looking at the other right. the other version of that reality. Right. And then when it comes to older stuff, it's just the the actualization, the realization that, you know, it's that I always refer to it, but the scene in the matrix when 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 Neo gets in the elevator with Morpheus after they meet the key master and he's like, did we did we do something wrong? He's like, you know, and he's like, no, what happened, happened. It couldn't have happened any other way. Right. He's like, well, how do you know? He's like, because we're still alive. And then they get down to the bottom floor, and he's waiting there with the keys. Yeah. He's like, follow me. So it's this idea, of, and we have to relinquish that, right? Because we're, we're, we need to be in control. And if we're holding on to the past, it's like creating this depression, right? And then we're anticipating the future, so it's causing us to feel like anxiety, and, there's over- and it's overwhelming, and then we're in that, and now that becomes the mindset, and we're breathing. And then your body starts to create and represent what the mind's going through. Absolutely. The, body, the body's reacting to the mind. The mind's always ahead of the body, right? And the body is like the world's greatest machine, yeah. and people don't understand the way endorphins work and things like that, and how our minds... Even subconsciously, yeah, are uh, you know like your belief levels have to be in certain areas for things to, to to kick off, and if they're really not there, if you're just trying to act like it or fake it till you make it, then it's really not going to happen. Right. You got like, and that's why I go back to the whole setting smaller macro uh, micro mi- milestones because as you accomplish those things that you never thought you'd be able to accomplish, now big things aren't so big anymore. You right. know, like like I, I got that. I, wow, I can do. Well, I, fuck it, I can do that. Or, it, shit, I did that. Well, fuck it. I'm going over there. You know, yeah. I'm going over there. It's um, the eating an elephant, right? It's right. one bite at a time. Right, right, right. And that's something I definitely did learn from CrossFit. And if you know, like, you know, obviously I'm going to do some inner inner CrossFit talking yeah. lingo. But there, look up you know, all the terms, guys. Right, right. Um, so there's a particular path for uh, an 800 meter run. Right. It was right. like around the block. Um, and I hate running. Like right. the, it's like the bane of my existence. Maybe because I wore Chuck Taylors to run <laughs> might have not been the best decision. Or Vans. Or Vans. <laughs> uh, but I hate I hate running. And it's something I know I should be doing, but I just don't do it. And, you know, I would just make these small goals. The, I'm like, just get to the fucking fire hydrant. Just get to the fire hydrant. Okay, now just get to this post. Get to that car. Get to get to the Greek restaurant. Get to the firehouse. Right. Come back down. Like, just get. And once you start to chip away at that 800-meter run around the block, and it just becomes these small little points that you could that you could see digestible points exactly right? i'm like i can Think, get there it's right yeah, there yeah, it's like yeah, hello yeah. i'm gonna be, the, I'm gonna be there by the time I'm, I'm done having this thought i'm right. gonna be there right right, right, right but right. we get wrapped up in the bigger you know when, when you sit down and, and again it's a, it's a small micro of the macro representation but when you sit down and you read the board it's like 800 meter to run 75 times like oh god damn it i can't do that <laughs> it's so overwhelming yeah, yeah is that something that you you gain from CrossFit as well? Like, how does that tie? Because obviously your, your wife's a coach. Yeah. Cross, CrossFit really worked for me because I'm stubborn. I would refuse to lose. So even if I don't do it or get it done, I'll be back tomorrow. And I'm going to do more than I did yesterday. It just worked really well with my uh, competitive nature. Like, it just it ended up being a good match. I'm not really the perfect height for CrossFit. I'm not, it's not really the sport that I should, you know, like, right. be a specialist in. But... It really works for my personality, and um, it's okay because there's no loss. It's just learning, and if you have that attitude, 
you know, you can learn a lot about yourself and you can apply that from f- your physical to your mental, to your business, to, to, your, to, your, to your, your marriage, to anything. Right. You know, if, if you know that it's not a loss, you're learning. Like, you know, like if, if you give it attention, you know, yeah. give it attention. It's carrying one overall theme, I think, or like an essence of who you are throughout all of it. And I think once you come into that space of the realization of who you are, your skill sets, what you can bring to the table. And I think a bigger part of that is serving. I think when you're able to serve others, and it doesn't become about Omar, Vinny, or any, it doesn't come about yourself, and it really does become about the other person in, in, in true, genuine fashion, right? Not like this false bullshit. Right, like right. Not, intent, if your intent is pure. Right, yeah. not fake it till you make it, right. right? That term is serving in one regard, right? Because the idea is just like show up and do it, right? Until you, you, know, until you actually are doing it. Right. But there's also the other term of live as, you know, live as though, like live as if you are, you know, which I think has the same sentiment, but doesn't have the fake it aspect. And words, you know, words Words are spells. Words are powerful, man. So powerful. Yeah, right. And and when you say fake it, it's like, well, no, I just rather like. You started the fucking thought wrong. Yes. Right. Yes, exactly right. right. You started the thought wrong. And now you're like on this trajectory of like, well, what's making it? Like, what is faking it look like? Why is it faking it? Why can't it just be living in essence of who you are and making it is subjective right it's, it's different to everybody right so like you know professional goals you know home goals marriage goals everything is different for everybody and that's what i tell everybody like, look man um yeah what i do I, I love what i do and 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 it looks cool um but anything you do as long as you love it you're good man you you know like yeah. you're gonna live your life and um a lot of people get caught up in what other people think, and it it, it, it takes it a little level, of, I think, maturity or self awareness sure. that really allows you to unlock. Like I, I use that a lot, unlocking, because I feel that people, a lot of people, are shackled by thought, and um, once you become aware of it and you identify it and change it, then you start unlocking yourself to your true potential. Yeah, it, it's definitely an unlocking. It's definitely a. Um it becomes like a game. It becomes like this, this, uh, like I said before, this untapped potential of, of infinite possibility. Infinite possibility. Yeah, absolutely. And I could attest to that because, and and but it's also a, like a releasing, right? Like it, like we hold on to these things, like whatever it is, ego or identity or you know drive or motivation. We hold on to like I want to be this. I need to make this. I need. And then, you know, it becomes a relationship with that thing, right? right? And money's a great example of that, I think. Because, you know, money is, is a great tool, but it's only a tool. Right. And as a culture, we have so put such a value on money that it's, it's you know, money's the root of all evil. It's like, it's not. It's a great tool, and money can't buy you happiness. Like, no, but... It's a great tool. Like that's the that's the the wording that we should be. It's a great tool. Right. It is a tool, and your relationship with those things transcends. Right. It, it it bobs and weaves. It shifts, and when you're able to relinquish that control and be like, all right, I'm just gonna let it let it flow the way it's supposed to in harmony and whatever it's supposed to look like. I'm gonna let it be. Um, that's when things start to unfold for you. That's the level of consciousness you're talking about right now. Awareness that a lot of people don't have. You know, like. Uh the guys that um, you know, the guys that you know don't may not have a lot of money or live in in, in, in subsidized housing, but have to have the BMW outside. It's because they want to touch that feeling of, of luxury, of mm. validation mm. that they're you know maybe they'll never be able to buy the million dollar mansion. But hey, man, I got this Gucci belt. Right. But I, that listen, that's such a big conversation that people don't understand. Like you know, like and now with the internet and all that, people are, are I believe if you look at it the right way, you can identify certain things, but you have to have a level of consciousness to that. I think people should be focusing more on their levels of consciousness yeah. than the thing right in front of them sometimes. Like, you know, like what you're looking at is usually a reflection of your thoughts and your, your, your all your experiences. So look at your experiences before you look at that. Or look at somebody else. Sure. You know? Well it's it's a reflection of yourself, right? The like the other person is just another version of you walking around. Right. And when you can have that actualization, the realization that there isn't a difference. There is no difference. It's just you're in a different meat suit than I'm in. You know right. what I mean? We're all people. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and when you can kind of get to the, the, the subatomical particle aspect of that, whether it be consciousness or you know whatever it is, when you can get like deeper than that and have that realization, it's like, yeah, there is a level of consciousness that we as a culture – don't promote. I think as it's a race. Yeah, yeah, a race. yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That we don't promote, 
but I think it's it's coming around a little bit. I think I think there is a collective consciousness that is bringing conversations like this to the forefront. Uh, that is, you know, the awareness and and stepping away from you know that Gucci belt and the BMW, but can't put gas in the car. You know what I mean? It and that's a cultural thing, um, but it's a shift that I think is so important. Mm -hmm. And I think COVID really shines some light on I that. I was about to say that I think that this pandemic has really um, opened up a lot of portals, right? As much as, you know, it changed the lifestyle, it opened up new ways to communicate. It also, the internet changed the game with getting your ideas out. Sure. Like there's no filter now. So, I mean, that's good and bad, right? Because you don't really know what are great ideas or what not great ideas are, but, but you'll hear them. Right. And, um, uh, the gatekeepers of the past, you know, like when I was young, right? So I, I, when I was like 20, 21, I would try to, to model. And, um, you know, I went and I dropped, I was like 190. And You are very handsome. Thanks, man. And you have great teeth. Appreciate that. And so, you know, then they, I would go and I would, they'd be like, oh, you have to drop more weight. And I'm like, yo, I'm 6'3". What do you want me to do? 150? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to die. Right. So finally, now nah, I can't do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the subjectivity, right. like what if I was that other guy that said, yo, I have to do this. And then I start throwing up stuff. You know, like being bulimic. And, you know, like yeah, yeah. think about that. Like if I wasn't self-aware, I could, you know, I could have been one of those guys, those crazy, like, you know, those crazy stories. Sure. You know, um, and I, I look at that. I look at my own stories a lot because, you know, I have boys now and I, I try to. I try to help them. Like I tell them all the time, I'm here to help guide you and help you not make as many mistakes as I made. You're going to make some. I can't yeah. protect you from everything. But yeah. I'll give you some stories, and maybe if you, anything like sounds like that, you kind of know the answer already. You know, help accelerate you a little bit. I think that's a really key element in, for me personally, has been you know becoming a parent. I have a five-year-old and a, and a one-and-a-half-year-old son. My, my five-year-old's a, a girl. Just FYI, I'm 24, 19, and 16. 24, 19, and 16. I'm a little ahead of you. Yeah. yeah. A couple, a couple, a couple, a couple, couple weeks. A couple years. Um, but revisiting life through their eyes, I kind of talk about that kind of often. But, you know, when you get to see the wonder in their eyes with first experiences when they're younger and then kind of going through their own journey, you know, and I think as a culture, we've lost that, you know, a lot of indigenous cultures, a lot of um, cultures outside of the United States, we, they, honor and and uphold the elders of the tribe you know and in just for that sake alone of like i'm not going to tell you that's why like the term life coach for me has it doesn't resonate be like oh no you have to own that you're a life coach i'm like i get it but i reframed as like journeyman for hire like okay. i'm not here to be your best friend i'm not here to to help you how to live life i'm not going to tell you how to live life so i'm yeah, here to exactly walk with is you your is your your, your function in that capacity? So I, I look at it as, um, you know, the, the, the typical hero's journey, the Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, the, the idea that, you know, you go out in the world, you get the awareness, you know, and then you go out in the world, you get knocked around, you have to, you know, go into the cave and face the dragon or face the thing, and that's where you learn the lesson. And then you go back, it's your, your responsibility, your, your privilege to go back and share that with your tribe. And, you know, my function in that role is, is being there. You know, when you walk out of that cave and you're, and you're fucked up and you're like, oh, man, like, I, I, you know, whatever it is, whatever I that cave I, is. I can do this. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's being out there and being like, have some honey wine. Yeah. Sharpen your sword. Let's get some snacks. Go back in. We got more. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, it's either the same cave again yeah. or we're going to the next one. And, you know, it's that impending doom feeling, you know. Um, where people, you know, need, in my opinion, um, just that person that's like, let, let's roll, like, let's roll. I got you. Like, I'm not going to hear, I'm not here to judge you. Right. I'm not here to ridicule you. I'm not here to motivate you. I'm just here. An objective opinion. You know, I'm just here. I'm just, uh, and you could, we could cry, we could laugh, whatever you need. I'm here. Right. And, um, and that's what just resonated with me. But I think that a lot of people are afraid to even, like, step onto that fucking gravel road that platform awareness like to even start their journey yeah that's one thing i'm coming across in in a lot of consultations people have the awareness and all of a sudden the false narrative or the default mode network kicks into their brain and all the dopamine and the serotonin wears off after the moment and it's like oh, I can't, yeah no no this is who i am you yeah. know and then you identify in those neurological pathways of this is who i am this is who i am i'm depressed i'm anxious i can't be helped i can't be helped i can't be helped well you're not going to be helped if you keep on saying i can't be helped People don't understand that the the the, the, the true 
belief of what you are will guide you to who you will become. People yeah. don't, they don't understand that yet. Like, I mean, you know, you hear the, you hear the, like, you know, the 10 years in the making overnight sensation, sure. you know, like, that's all the time, but people don't really understand that, and I, I hear myself telling my boys that a lot lately, like, you know, it's your real belief which, which will forge, you'll, you'll come out and become that person, but yeah. you have to understand who you want to be. Yeah. Um, and when you're talking to people, you know, they're, the reason they're talking to you is because they don't like where they are, who they are, sure. but they're not willing to put the work in to change it. Right. It's always easier to go back to your routine. Comfort. Or Oh, let's go back. I want to ask you a question. So sure. You said the difference between routine and ritual. Yeah. Deep dive for that. Sure. I, I want people to know what that means. So for me, um, I think a routine, um, I could just put it in my own world. So my routine started as I'd wake up, I would do my yoga, I'd do my breathing, and I'd do my meditating. Right, and that would just put me. And then I'd go outside with my kids, and we say good morning to the day. We we you know say good morning to the clouds and the birds and the trees and the grass, and we you know breathe in the air. And we do some sun gazing if it's sunny, and that was like a routine. Okay. And I think where it shifts is a routine is important, but is somewhat breakable. Okay. And when you shift from a routine to a ritual, there's this intrinsic energy and essence into it being a ritual it's no longer this thing that could be broken you could adapt it you could change it but in its essence it's still the same thing so there's a thing called ritual plasticity right okay. so it's the idea that your brain seeks novelty your brain likes new things right that's why crossfit workouts are great Stimulus, right? right it's Stimulus. like this new it's this new thing that you're going to do so what happens is we get like complacent in ourselves and it's like, okay, look, you do the same five yoga videos, the hips, the right. stretch, the right, back, right, the right. core, uh, and your body and your brain get bored with it. So it doesn't, it doesn't you know, resonate the same way it did in the beginning. So it's the idea that you know, the, the routine is – you could fall off a routine. Okay. I don't think you could fall off of a ritual. And even if I don't show up to do that specific thing um, that day – the ritual is still in place. It's just right. on hold. You can go back to it. Yeah. It's just on hold for that day for whatever reason. I overslept or whatever. I, I you know, whatever it is. I think the routine could be broken and, and 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 doesn't have the same essence as a ritual. Doesn't have the same commitment. Yeah. Right. 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 Like a, a, a ritual is a lifestyle. Right. 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 You know, it's it's part of who you are. A routine is like this. It's like a, a first step to it becoming a ritual, in my okay. opinion. So routines can become rituals. I, routines do become rituals, right. and then rituals become your lifestyle. Right, right, right. Routines become rituals. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So you've been getting a lot of, um, obviously, you talk about the world. You, you talk about um, routines. You, do, you, do you find a lot of spirituality, right? That's what I'm starting yeah, to say. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right, and what, how has that feedback been? Do, you, do people? I mean, I feel that people are always looking like they're missing something. Sure. But I think this will really resonate with people. Sure. Uh, with spirituality, it's it's just. I think my underlying spirituality is that it's just it, we're all the same. We're all just connected, you mm -hmm. know, um, and we just have these different pockets of thought or belief or whatever it is, and. Yeah, I, I think there's an underlining as you know, conscious beings. We have this underlying thought of like, what, like, what else? And then once you fill right, once you fill those hierarchy of needs, right? You you have a roof over your head, your belly's full. Once those hierarchy of needs, that triangle is all filled up, then you then it becomes like, now what? Right. You know, and either you stay in that triangle and you try to up the need, right? I want a bigger house, a better car, better dinners, better food. Right. Which is great, but is that really what it boils down to? Is it just this perpetual cycle of more and more, more, and, more, more and more and right, more? Right, right. And what I've just learned through my own experiences of reading and, and you know, whether it be podcasts I listen to or, or YouTube seminars or whatever it is, that is – that's a good – that's that's serving, right? Those, those are good. There's nothing wrong with wanting a, a nice car, a beautiful house, or a really expensive steak dinner. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you identify in those things and those things are the motivation behind you, that's when it becomes a toxic relationship. Yeah, you find yourself empty once you hit a goal. Like yeah. where do you start? You, know, yeah. you have to have a higher calling. Yeah. yeah. And I think then, then it becomes you know, the idea of, of – you know, conscious hierarchy of needs you know it starts with with you know 
being unconsciously incompetent, you know, and and not and just kind of like we were discussing, kind of just walking through life, you know, and that's just the opposite end of that triangle. Right now, it just goes up, funnels upward, then it, you, it, it elevates to consciously competent, and that's when it's a it, you become a game changer. It becomes a game changer in the sense that you can have the ability to change and manipulate time and energy and you become almost like an alchemist you know and you invo- and you, it was to your point you said you know people you say to your sons like it's that inner thing that drives you that will always drive you and that's one thing i learned from reading that book the alchemist and the line i extracted from that you know i try to extract one thing out of every book and that was the thing or multiple but if i get one Great. You won. The one thing I extracted from the alchemist was, you know, he says to him, he says to the alchemist, like, thank you. Like, he, th- he goes on this journey, meets the alchemist, whatever, and he thanks him. He's like, I only invoked what you already knew. You just, you just, we, we, lo- we lose ourselves. You know, somewhere, you know, somewhere after the age of seven, that's where we're in the theta brainwave state from the ages of two to seven. We start to get programmed by culture, by society, by our parents, by our friends. And, and I talked about this recently on an Instagram live I did with um, Dr. Chris Lee. And, you know, I remember being 10 or 11, somewhere in that world, and I was still, like, playing with action figures. Right. And my friend at the time, who, you know, just through not through any type of circumstance, just, you know, time, you know, changes the path of people. He was like, oh, you still play with toys? And I was in this weird position where I need to, like, stand by who I am as justify a kid. Justify yourself? Right, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to justify, like, who I am in essence. And I had to be like, oh, like, uh, No. No, I don't play toys. Meanwhile, now I have a fucking Darth Vader alarm <laughs> clock. There's a Boba Fett helmet over here, um, and I and and you you lose a part of who you are in essence, right. you know, to adapt to society. And once you can come back to that fully, uh, and you step into that space, and and you start receiving that more, it becomes completely different. Like life becomes completely different. Yeah, I mean, you you wake up you. You know, you're born in your early years. You don't know who you are, yeah. right? So you become you're like water, like Bruce Lee says, right? Yeah. You like water, and you're just trying to fill in whatever's in front of you. Um, and I think that's really important because, I mean, without going into a whole into society where, where you know, the youth or and the youth is subjective, right? Whether five or twenty five, to me, they're still kids. Sure. Um, you know, they need a true north star. Sure. Right, and you know, whatever else they want to do is all right, but if they have the right base or the right frame or the right foundation, whatever sure. you want to use, whatever uh, analogy you want to use, um, the rest, the way it grows is fine. Right. The way it grows is fine. But, um, yeah, like, and that was just an interaction with somebody. Um, but, you know, kids have interactions with that all the time. Right. And um, and those kids are only, they're only re- repeating something else they heard from somewhere else. Right. They don't have, like, original thought. Right. They're too young yet. Right. They haven't formed an opinion. Right. And um, that's that's the game, or that's that's the thing I think we're addressing in this podcast today. Because I, I think there's a, a huge void, um, the state of anxiety, depression, uh, mental awareness right now. Oh, yeah. It's just been bana- like bananas to me, like like wow. And right. um, I think it's just because I was having a conversation with JC earlier, where a lot of the distractions are gone right now. A lot yeah. of the outer stimulus, yep. the sports, the this, the that. I mean, besides our president, which is always uh, funny to look at. Um, you know, there's really there's right. time to really look. Sure. And and things are becoming uncovered. And um at least people are being honest about it where they like, yo, I do need help, I think. You know? Well it's 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 there's nowhere to run. Right. There's nowhere to hide. There's right. you know, you're you're in a vacuum of existence right now. And what is that actually like? Are you happy in your vacuum? Right. You know, right. and and then you're you're forced to face your realities. The realities that you created maybe consciously or subconsciously. And so many. And when you hear that there's a a drought in Zoloft right now, right? That's a fucking problem, yeah. right? There's you to get Zoloft, you need a rain check right, right now. Right. Like that's that's scary. Yeah. Like that's scary. Everybody, everybody's going for it, right? right? That's that, and that's the quick fix that we look for. That's that's the culture. But that's the American culture. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think that, but that's human mind. Like we all want the path of re- least resistance, right? right? Quick, of course. Quick, how like, do you fix it fast? Right. Like, why don't I have a six pack after going across it for one month? It's like, well, you still fucking eat bonbons at night, so right, like right, that's right. not going to happen. There's no magic pill, right? There is no magic pill, and when like what what this pandemic has created is exactly to your point is that people are now in a, in a space where you're you're almost forced to face yourself, you know. Right. And now you ask yourself, well, what am I going to do with this opportunity? 
-hmm. And if you have a mindset, we could say, well, I could do anything with this. Right. Like now I have unlimited time. You know, I saw this great meme. And it was like, if, if after all of this, you're still where you started, then time was never your issue. Right. right you know, right. and that's the truth. Yeah. That's the reality. You know, and but we we dump it. We're all, we're also we're a very busy culture, but we're busy doing what, mm -hmm. right? And uh, when you could when busy you could step into or that, productive, which are you really right now? Right, right, right. right. Great point. Right, right. You know, because people say, "Oh, I'm really busy." Are you? I mean, look, my kids be like, "Oh, I know you're busy." I'm like, "Yo, I make time." Right. That's a big statement I always use. I make the time. It's not. I don't like. I'm not. I I, w I wish I had the lifestyle. I could just be sitting home watching. You know, whatever. You can't watch. Would anything. you? What, would watching? you really want that lifestyle? No, I'd probably drive myself crazy. So. I wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. a part of me, like, I always, like, and that, again, that's like an old thought process where, like, man, I wish I could just sit and fucking play Call of Duty again for 14 hours. <laughs> and then uh, the other part was like, really? That time has passed. Like, you yeah. really want to do that? And then I'm like, mm, no, I guess, I, like, yeah. I like waking, like, I was my wife all the time, I like waking up at four in the morning. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Like, I like getting out of bed at four in the morning and doing yoga and breath work and meditating and, 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 you know, being immersed in books and podcasts and, and ways of thinking and psychology and philosophy, I love it. Like, I, I have a, a, a thirst for knowledge that can't be quenched when it so comes to that world. Like, I could just sit in front of YouTube and watch Alan Watts wax on poetically about things. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is great. Right, right, right. You know, so I, 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 you know, I go back there too. Is that like the default mode? Where I'm like, I wish I could just play video games and eat pizza. Right. But then I think intrinsically, I know that that's not serving. Yeah, that was serving when you were like ten, for a or, little while. Or twenty five. <laughs> ten. <laughs> twenty five, dude. When you were younger. Let's yeah. Say younger. Let's but say younger. but it but it served me right at mm -hmm. the time. Like it's who I, it's where I was conscientiously right. And now you grow and you and you hope that you can grow, outgrow that, that mindset, but how many people don't? How many people stay there? Stay stuck. And that's the thing, right? You become adult bodies with, with child mentality. Well, there's no forced evolution, right? People tend to evolve. Like I was telling my son this other, the other day. I talked to them a lot because they have nobody else to talk to, really. <laughs> so um, I'm like, listen, man, the friends that you had when you were 10 may not be the friends you had when you were 17, yeah. when you're 25, when you're 35. I was like, some of your friends... You know, you'll have your whole life because they also have evolved. I said, understand that because he was your friend then and you don't kind of like have the same things in common anymore, it's okay to change. Right. Don't feel guilty about that. Because right. he's like, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, like, all right, well, then you don't. Then don't do that Then shit. you're going somewhere else. Right. And that's fine. But um, That's great. People, but people, don't, they don't understand that because there's so much guilt. There's like there's this overriding guilt with yeah. society, like, for anything. Like, oh, I don't want to do Oh, I feel so bad about that. Yeah. Or, you know, like. But you gotta like live your truth. Live yeah. your truth. Do what you can to the best of your ability, and know that that's enough. Because yeah. somebody like my personality, like I, I don't have any limits, so I'm like, oh, I could do more. I could do more. Yeah, but this is a marathon. Yeah. Right. I gotta live my life for as long as I can live it. Right. Um, and if you go so hard one way, other other things suffer. Right. So like you said, um, do I have a lot of that? No, because well, I have my business. Well, I have working on the business. I'm working in the business. I'm working with the clients. Working on my marriage, I'm working on my, my kids. I'm working, you know, I take care of my mother. Like you know, I'm always working on them. Sure. So like, and it's forever, and people have to embrace that. Yeah, they have to embrace that. It's one thing I got very early on, like when I started floating, was like this idea of like staircases and landings, right? Okay. It's like you like some staircases are steeper, some stairs are wider, some stairs are narrower, right? But you're, there's always some, some have more steps than others, right. but there's always steps to climb, and then you hit a landing, and you get to enjoy that landing. For three seconds. Enjoy it. Ba bass keep on fucking walking up more stairs. And it never ends. And when you realize that there is no end, right? There is no, like, and again, culturally, and it's not to blame it on the culture. It's just the reality of it. We have this mindset of, like, I'm going to hit 65. I'm going to retire and go to Florida. Right. It's like, okay. You and, so? and then you're And then you're going to live? Like, right. so what did you do for 65 years before that? Right. Like, what were, what were you doing? Just, just. Existing, and what happens if you have a life event before you hit sixty five? Right now, what I, right. Ha I had that situation with my, happen my mother. My mother was always, "Oh, I'm gonna retire. I'm gonna retire." She has a stroke, and you know now she lives a different existence. And um, and I, I just tell this man, I said, "Look, it slowed you down. Enjoy it. Enjoy. Right. It. You got your grandkids. Enjoy right. it. You weren't doing this before. Maybe it's time to just live for this." Right. And um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes a, a life event forces you to look at things differently and her having it also forced me sure. to say hey man business is great 
making a million dollars is great, but I also am responsible right. for being a good husband and for being a father. And, you know, whatever happens with them is somehow related to what I'm giving them. Yeah. So, you know, make sure you're present for that. Yeah, and it's about filling up your own cup first, right? Right. Doing the things that you know you need to be doing intrinsically to, you know, fill that soul, right? And, you know, that's pouring from a full cup, right? That's the old expression. But And especially with, like, clients and consultations, you know, you sit across from people and you could see, I mean, I, I could see it, and some have said it's like, my soul died. And that's a fucking jarring thing to see people say. And they're just like, yeah, my soul died a long time ago. And you're like, wow. Do you do consultations in person or on Zoom? Uh, I do them some in person and then some over the phone, you know, just based off of everyone's comfort level with things. But um, when you when you could do it across from someone, you could look into their eyes and, and they express that sentiment to you. And you could see like, oh, they're, they're not to sound fucking crass, but they're dead inside, right. you know. And then you just have to like relight that, just that. Spark that like, ember, right, that, yeah. Make it a fire, and right? that's okay. Like it's yeah. okay. like that. It, that's okay. Yeah. And you have to, you know, just buckle up. Tell me about this deprivation tank stuff. Yeah. Let me hear about that. Oh, it's <laughs> fucking, it's wonderful. So it's um, so you go into a tank. You go into um, a large bathtub or a pod. It's okay. just a matter of, of your. A comfort. pod has a cover. Right? Yep, it has like oh. an. It looks like an egg. Okay. And it's filled with a thousand pounds of Epsom salt. Okay. Okay. So and you're definitely gonna float because it's a lot of salt. Oh, it's oh. it's denser than the Dead Sea. Okay. So you're gonna float. Yeah. And uh, it's void of sight, so you could turn off the lights. I always recommend people do, so right. it's fully dark, and you're immersed in the water up until like your face. So you want to frame your face wow. with the water. So okay. and you put in earplugs, and you can't hear anything, can't see anything because the room is. I mean, if you close your eyes in in your bedroom at night, it's darker than that. Like, Crazy. it's fucking wild. Right. And then the water is ideally at 98.6 degrees. So you Ooh. can't feel anything either. So they say it's like the closest thing to being back in your mother's womb. Okay. Like, you're in a vacuum. And my big thing when I first did it, I was, you know, I heard about it on Joe Rogan. And then, you know, when I was younger, I heard about it on The, on the Simpsons, did an episode on it. Right, right, right. And then there was a movie called Altered States from like the, was it the 80s? It might have been the 80s. I saw that when I was younger. So I always knew about it. It was always, like, in my f frame of reference. Um, and then I thought to myself one day, I was like, I want to try this. And then I thought immediately afterwards, I'm afraid of what I'm going to think. And then immediately after that, I thought, well, that's scarier than anything you're actually going to think. And I think so many people are afraid. To, it, it's to our point. They're afraid to step into that space of themselves. Hmm. And that's what it really did for me. It gave me this, this really hyper-focused perspective of – the narrative that I'm giving myself and the perspective I'm giving myself. And there's tons of Epsom salt, so it's great for magnesium, and it's great to, you know, 74% of people are magnesium deficient. Okay. You know, so it's, it's really good for your body and muscle relaxing, and it, it's relaxing in general. So you're in the tank, you lay there. Yep, right? you lay back. For yep. how long? Uh, an hour is like the standard time. I've done an hour and a half. So an hour, yep. and what is what is the goal while you're in the pot? So you you the goal is it really depends, you know. Uh, yeah, because well, I'm so, like, all right. It so it depends on the person. So you know, you reach theta brainwave states, which is where children operate from from the ages of two to seven. Okay. So you're pure, like you're almost pure consciousness and essence, right? Okay. So you, that's achieved at like depending on your outside practice, but you know, anywhere between twenty to forty minutes, okay. right? So all of a sudden, like all the dust of your mind settles, you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, like, this one narrative comes through. In my, in my experience, in experience right? this one narrative kind of comes through, and you're able to look at things, whatever it is. What was your narrative? Do you mind? Um, no, I don't. Um, finding my own voice and, and, and facing myself. It wasn't, it wasn't like um, an overall narrative. It was super granular, but it was like the narrative of the self. Like, where where do I need to make changes? How do I make these changes? Do I even need to make any of these changes? Um, and it became like this very, you become hyper-focused and clear on life, you know? And this is just my own experience. So yeah. it might be very different for, for other, other people. people. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, but it became this thing where I walked out. I was like, oh, I'm a different person now. Like, my brain thinks differently, right. you know? And the best way I could put it was I was able to, like, compartmentalize, I can never say that word, <laughs> my thoughts and put them in like little boxes and put them in like little storage containers. And then it became like an Rubik's cube or like, 
you know, um, like a rubber band ball, just untangling this ball of your thoughts and your emotions and your feelings and everything that we, we are constantly, even just sitting here, like our bodies are being stimulated. It's fucking hot as balls in here, yeah. right? It, like our, That's what you, I'm know, you can open the door if you want, like whatever is, whatever is easier, man, if, it's, if that helps the lighting or whatever. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just like we're constantly stimulated. When you remove all that and now you're in like, again, a vacuum of existence, there's, there's nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. nowhere to fucking go. That's pretty cool. I think you uh, should try it. I, I think I will. You dig it. I think I'll come try up. It. Bring bring the film crew. Yeah, we'll yeah, film right. it. Yeah, they'll be in the ball. They'll be in the they'll be in the <laughs> tank with you. Like, turn off the fucking lights. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's there's no lights. What are you what are you consuming now? Like, what's on your Internet Explorer? What's on? What are you reading? What are you listening to? I'm reading right now. Um, uh, shoe Shoe Dog Phil Knight's story. Okay. Yeah. Um, last book I read was. Um, Danny Morell wrote it. I like him. He's a the um, so something road. It, it's like. It's all self development stuff. Yeah, I'm reading. I read before that. I was reading uh, the work of leaders, sure, which I loved. Yeah. I loved, it. and the one thing I got out of the book because you mentioned it was that it's vision, alignment, and execution, Perfect. champion execution. So, I found in my business um, alignment was what I had to work on. When you're working with more than one person, sure, alignment is a constant thing. And 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 you know, like I've spoken to some of my friends, I'm like, yeah, but it's fucking exhausting. I'm like, yeah, but. But that's the game, right? Like, if you want to lead, that has to be part of it. I think it only it's only exhausting for, like, to me, like, for X amount of time. Like, it's always exhausting. Right. But then once you, like, embrace it and realize, like, I'm in it. Well, after reading I'm the book, it. after reading the book, I'm like, I understood that this is, if I want to be this, this is part of it. Right. So I, my, my relationship with the alignment yes, changed. Yes, yes. And that was a big uh, light bulb moment for myself. Because yeah. I'm like, why don't they fucking know this already? And I'm right. like... Well, not everybody sees the whole macro like you do. So yeah. maybe you share your vision more, and then you explain, align them, be like, look, without this, this can't happen. Right. And when they do execute, you champion them. And um, I put that into implementation, and that worked out tremendously. It, it worked out really well for me. And, it, it can, and I use that for life. Yeah. Because you know, like, alignment in your marriage. Yeah. Alignment with your kids. Align, yeah. I mean, how many, like, I, I have a really good relationship with my kids, I think. Um, you know, I, I know friends of mine that their kids don't talk to them. Like, yeah. they're, like, you know, like it's weird. Sure. So, um, yeah, like I take those things and I and I try to spread it across the whole board. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's what I've been doing. But yeah, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight is something I wanted to read because I want I uh, and I'm using this as a as as a stair to my next landing, um, where you know Phil Knight had a big visionary philosophical um, approach to sure. shoe branding. And that what is what allowed him to explode and become the juggernaut that they are now. Now they're nothing like what they first started. Sure. But um, even now with the, the Colin Kaepernick endorsements and stuff like that, he still kind of stays true to his vision. Sure. Um, and I like that. And, uh, you know, to hear somebody who's done it on such a higher level may spark something else in me sure. that may help me level up. I, th I, think that, I think that that's a really underlining constant thread that that goes throughout people right is is this you could say philosophical spiritual religious whatever it is but this underlining theme that i'm finding with with all great thinkers or philosophers or whatever it is psychologists um it's there's this this thread that just goes throughout life through all people through all things and it's the expression of that thread. And when you could tap into what the thread is, whether it be a light source, an energy, whatever you want to right. call it, when you could extract from that thread and express that thread in your particular section of that thread, then it does become unlimited potential. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you just have to have a true relationship with it. Yeah. And I think that word is important, relationship. Like, it's your relationship with anything, right? You can have the same exact thing happen to me and you, and we might have totally different uh, perspectives on it because sure. of our relationship with it. And sure. um, sometimes, you know, you hear this stuff all the time. Well, you know, they, they can lines, but they're, they're really true. You know, it's, it's not what happens, it's how you react to it. Because yeah. how many times, I mean, and I'm guilty of this too, and I, I'm, I work on myself all the time where something from work may have gone wrong, and then all of a sudden I'm in a bad mood in my house with my wife and kids, but they, don't, they have nothing to do with that. Right. It, it's, it's a discipline. Right. Uh, going back to the word you, 
compartmentalize. Man, it's a hard I got you, bro. I got yeah, you. Thank you. Um, but, you know, like, you have to, yeah, man, that's there. You know what? At 9 o'clock tomorrow, you deal with it. Right. But right now, we have these six hours that are not promised with your family. Go enjoy that. Um, yeah. And if people can establish that discipline, and me, I'm working on it. I've sure. gotten better with it, but I still work on it uh, constantly, um, and I'm aware of it. So I think that's a big difference. Um, then you change yourself. You yeah. change yourself, you change the world. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is how all these concepts kind of, re- they kind of intertwine with me. This is how I kind of interpret them in my relationship sure. with them. Sure, you know, So I, I love the, the, the reacting versus, I'm a big proponent of, like, the thought of reaction versus response, you right. know, and, and being able to respond to life rather than react to it. Right. And I love the moments where you fuck up. You know, I look, I, you know, we went away and I had this big reaction. I got frustrated, blah, 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 long story short. You know, and then I, I had this perspective you know where I where I finally like removed myself. I was like, well, what was that about? Like, and it's, like, what was, what was it really about? Yeah, it was really, what was it really about. about yeah. and it was about like holding on and trying to recreate the experience of the first time we went on this trip. And once I was able to let go of that, it became a much better trip. Like, you know how they say you carry l- luggage with you, a yeah, baggage. Yeah. Like, you got to leave your baggage at the door. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that that's in everything. Yeah, that's in everything. Yeah, and, and but you but we we take it when it comes to like those terms and stuff like that, or those theories, those memes you read. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you carry baggage for sure. But we don't realize that ba- that baggage could be just the summer vacation with your family. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, the previous one being excellent and meditating on the beach and the sunrise. And then this one, not so much. But they both have their merit, right? It's right. a yin and a yang. It's a balance. You had the great spiritual experience of the first one. Now this is not going to be that. And you have to accept that. Embrace it. Embrace yeah, that. Embrace that, yeah. You know? Yeah. And when you can learn to have perspective and respond to life over react to life, to me, that become that's become a superpower. You change the game, yeah. You change the game, and you know, without going too deep into it, but you know, like, you go as deep as you want, buddy. You bring into you know, you I'll put on my Boba Fett helmet. We'll bring, fucking get deep right now. <laughs> we bring in finances. You bring in people's lifestyles and cultures and what they've seen, what their parents have seen, what their grandparents have seen, and you know, all that stuff. It becomes harder for them to respond. Sure, but they have to develop that consciousness. I think that's. I think if everybody did that, if, sure. they, if instead of they pointed at somebody else and said he's the reason, and they say, "Yo, I'm the reason. Yo, how do I fix that?" I think that would change the world. Um, yeah, and I think that's what that's what we're missing right now. Yeah, it's the recognition of of, uh, of yourself and others. You know, mm-hmm. what do you what do you have? What are your goals? What are some of your your big goals that you've set for yourself? Those, if you want, if you can share them. The biggest goal. I mean, my my big goal. Sorry about the mic. Um, okay. My biggest goal is always to you know I want to be able to financially impact people, right? Whether right now it's transactional, where I'm helping people get into homes or helping people adjust their businesses, but I want to get to a point in my life where I can you know I'd love to like sponsor a kid who wants to go to college. Not my own kids. I, I want to take care of that, but I'm talking about change it for other people. And yeah. if it's one person or five thousand people. It doesn't matter, but that's my that's my end game. My end game is to leave an impact and um, leave it better than I found it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I know it sounds cliche, but it's truly that. But my big thing has always been finance. I feel like finance shackles people, like their thought process, their uh, their possibilities. You know, like they won't. Oh, I could never. I could. I, I yo. I hate hearing that. Yeah. Like, well, it's I, like people say, like, I, well, I I can't meditate. I'm like. Because you didn't try. Right. Because right. you didn't try. And you didn't, and then you and then you gave up too quickly. Yeah. You, yeah. you like it's like that's, you, you that's can same do thing. anything right. if you really direct your energy to it. Right. Yeah. So um, you know, like you, I mean, you won't be able to grow yourself eight inches, but who knows? Right. Um but yeah, that's what people like they lack the discipline. Yeah. You know, everybody has the motivation, right. inspiration. Yeah, but it's a discipline, bro. Like you yeah. gotta all right, what's your plan? You got the plan? All right, now execute your plan. Right. Ah, oh, it's too hard. All right, man. So you don't want it bad enough. So right. go back to what you started with, and when you're ready to get here, it's here for that's, you. That's it, right? It's that's when it. you're ready. When yeah. you're actually ready to step into that When you that said, space. like, going back to that story I told you about the house, I was like, yo, no, you're wrong. Like, I didn't bug out on the lady, but I still <laughs> carry- Fuck you! I, st- I still carry that chip 20 years later. I'm like, yeah. well, fuck you, bro. Like, you're wrong. And I not, I didn't go back and prove it wrong, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to do it for my family, so it was going to happen. It wasn't an option. Yeah. That, your back your, was against your the wall. An- your answer was not- not happening. So. It may be your answer. Yeah. And I respect that it's your answer. So I'll go somewhere else. But it's not, right. It's <laughs> not the answer I'm going to accept right now. It's right. not the answer right. I can accept right now. Right. And, and yeah, it's, it's about that discipline, right? It's the Aristotle, the jo- Jocko Wilnick, right? Discipline equals freedom, right? right? It results in freedom. And when you become disciplined, and it doesn't have to be, 
you know, it, it manifests itself in different ways. It could be a relationship. It could be financial. It could be with a dietary practice. It could be with a meditation practice. It could be with a, a yoga or a CrossFit or jujitsu, well, whatever it is. Going back to what you said, you said you saw me earlier before you started, and you were like, hey, man, you lost a lot of weight. I have it all recorded, by the way. Right. So <laughs> um, I was talking to JC about this earlier. Um, you know, like, I, I practice or I, I preach a certain thing, sure. right? Discipline. I, I practice. And I, I saw a picture. Um, he had posted um, May 28th? May 24th. And I saw the picture, and that's not who I was. So Inside. Wh- yeah, I looked oh, at myself. Yeah, I said, yeah. and you know what I said? I said, fuck that. That was it. I turned the switch on, and I just walked the other way. And my wife was like, wow, you're really just playing. Wake up at 4 in the morning. But yeah. No, no, because I got to walk it. Because, I mean, I use my kids as a motivator, right? Like, I'm like, I can't tell them to do this yes. if I'm not doing this. Yes. It's like my father used to drink beer and smoke cigarettes and tell me not to do that. Right. While, while we watch the game together. And, you know, like, okay. Luckily, I just didn't want to be that, so right. I didn't go that way. Yeah. But I can't be that guy. I can't be like, yo, man, you should do this. And meanwhile, I'm eating McDonald's. It's just not going to happen. So mm-hmm. I walk my walk. Um, and um, that's where I'm at now. And um, now I was talking to JC earlier. I have, I have, now we made, he made me do micro goals. He's yeah. like, what, what do you want to do to September 29th? And yeah. what's your goal for this? And what, So I was like, all right, fuck you, bro. I'm going to do it. And yeah. uh, now, yeah. but that's, you that's take the a motivator. Little, but it, yeah, you take, you know, like you, you self motivate yourself sometimes. Like the, the story, like you read, you saw the last dance with Michael Jordan. I didn't see all of it. The only episode he, I watched was he would with the make Pacers. Up, he would make up fake conversations yeah. with other people yeah. to get him going for the next game to destroy them. Yeah. And um, I do that a little bit, too, with certain different things to kind of like... In the shower. Get right? me crazy. <laughs> oh, yo, in the middle of a workout, you're talking to yourself like, you know, like, fuck you, pussy, get up. And Come I'm on. like, yo, you're right. I got to get up. Right. And, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah and it, it, it works. Other, uh, for some people, it won't work. Right. You know, they, they don't like, but I have that personality that it works for me. Yeah. Ne- negative reinforcement really pushes me. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's, the, uh, it's the discipline in that, right? Uh, I, the only episode of The Last Dance I watched because I was a big Pacers fan. Reggie Miller? was the Reggie Miller Pacers episode. And then I saw the Gary Payton. He's like, yeah, I had Jordan well covered. And Jordan's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, just, he's just laughing at him. I was like, no one had Jordan covered back. Like, what are you, crazy? Like, yeah, that's yeah. cute that you thought you did. Yeah, yeah. They, they took me off the defense. Yeah. That's, that's why we lost. All right, bro. All right, maybe because his father died and he was going through some shit. You know, he was, he was had there. nothing to do with you, Gary Payton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where can people connect with you? Um, I think I'm on all the social media platforms. Uh, Ask Lewis Omar on Instagram. Um, Ask Lewis Omar at hrnco.com. LinkedIn. I'm on, uh, I think I'm under Ask Lewis Omar. I have a website, Ask Lewis Omar. There you go. I'm everywhere. You I'm are everywhere. everywhere. Just Google my name, Ask Lewis Omar. You'll find it. Ask Lewis Omar. Thank you so much, man. No, thank you. This thank was you. awesome. Yeah. It's fucking... We're doing Bikram we're gonna get. We're going to get some air conditioning next time. That'll yeah, be I'm, part of it. We, we, I've said that in like June. I was like, I got an air conditioning. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? It's Bikram podcasting. <laughs> you lose some weight and you'll you'll uh, get some thug going. Oh, I definitely did. Yeah, definitely for sure. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you Thanks for the for hat. I appreciate it. Of course. Check of course. out this man all over on all social media platforms. And uh, thank you for your time, man. I appreciate it. The Brady Briscoe Podcast. Thanks Thanks. for having us. Thank you. Until next time, much love. Peace. Bye.